Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lenten season. And I would like to invite you, I know that most of you came to Ash Wednesday, uh, so I would like to invite you to go back to the opening prayer for that day, Ash Wednesday, because in that opening prayer, I think we have uh, like a key to open today's gospel. Why the Catholic Church invites us to meditate on the temptations of Jesus Christ every single first Sunday of Lent. So I'm going back to and read it. Grant, I was saying that as Wednesday. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign. Campaign. So that's the first term. The Christian religion is about a campaign. And even if I, don't li I do not like to emphasize that too much, we cannot forget that. We find that in St. Paul, St. Paul's letters, a lot. In St. Mark, a lot. Christianity is about a campaign. Some people do not like to talk about that maybe, but it is a reality. And it continues. As we take up battle, fight, again, spiritual evils. Again, some people may say, oh, this is a very primitive mentality that evil, Satan, is out there and sometimes in there doing his job. For us Christians, it is a reality. It is something that is going on. We believe that Satan is working and he is a pure spirit. When I'm saying pure, I'm not saying that he is clean or, or a good one. Pure is that it's only spirit. This is how theology calls angels. Since he is a fallen angel, so a pure spirit who is very smart, who is there, ready to tempt us. And we have to be aware of that. So knowing that, and for, because my personal things, this week, after Ash Wednesday, or maybe before Ash Wednesday now, I don't remember. I'm getting older, so I forget. Maybe it was after Ash Wednesday. And I'm so sorry I didn't write that. But there is a, a I'm, later I'm going to give you that. I was trying bef uh, uh, before, uh, during the mess actually, find out uh, uh, the book. It was written in 1940 something. I think the, 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 the one who wrote, who wrote that book is from England, I'm not sure. Again, I'm going to give you that information. So it is interesting, it's about a old, the book is about an old, uh, very experienced devil who is writing to a very young and not expert devil, his nephew. So he's writing letters, interesting letters. You should read them. I am, because now I have some time, I don't have the time to read, so I found a, a, a way to listen to the to the letters. So I'm driving and listening to the old devil writing to his nephew how to tempt human beings. How wonderful is that book. You should read it during this Lenten season. Evidently it's not the word of God, but that gives us a wonderful insight about how Satan works. Beautiful insight. And in that same way, I saw the movie Nefastus, Nefarius, I forgot the, the title, it was last year. It's this man who is a serial killer who is ready to be sent, to be killed actually. And there is a psychiatrist who is hired by the penitentiary system, I don't know, whatever, it's an, in Alabama, I think, the movie. And 
So this, this psychiatrist who doesn't believe in the evil one, in Satan, goes to, uh, now I, I'm saying in my, how do you say, my, my skin goes like that, Ooh, okay. Goes to the prison, and his job is to find out if the man is mentally unstable or he is fine. And based on that, they are going to kill him or not. Saying, no, yeah, he's fine. So kill him, or no, the man has is cuckoo, so don't kill him. And it's the, the, the entire movie is the man talking to the psychiatrist, and it's the evil one talking to him. If you want to know some theology from Satan, go and watch the movie. Have you seen the movie, please? So, there's theology in there. Satan, from Satan's point of view. Nicely done. And I went online to tell you how it is a reality. A bishop from Spain talking about that movie, he was saying how the people who made the movie is an independent movie, okay? That's a key. Why is an independent movie? I don't want to go deeper and deeper, but why? Go think about that. And when they, they were planning to make that movie, it was very difficult for them. One of them got very sick, almost died in the hospital. Think about it. why. The bishop was saying how that movie was a goal to Satan. Because our society, many people in our society think that this priest who is talking about Satan here, he has a very primitive mentality. He is not me, okay? Maybe the man, me, has a problem with Satan. That's a primitive mentality. Satan? Actually, this is one of the arguments of the psychiatrist in front of the evil one. There is a beautiful scene when he begins, the Satan, the devil one, begins to make wonderful theology. The psychiatrist said, you know, I'm not a theologist. I, I, I'm not, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to call a priest. Oh, my God, that's... And the priest came. He said, Satan? No, this is only for... Now the, the man who was possessed by the evil one was saying, uh -huh. You don't believe in Satan? No, that's not. That's a primitive mentality. So the man said, no. ah, the, the Satan actually was very happy because the priest was saying, denying the reality of the evil one. Okay. I just gave you the introduction, okay? But, but it's very important. The church is inviting us in Lenten season to think about Satan. Not because we want to put him up there. No, because we want to know, and the church knows that it's a reality, and that he is there every single day. And the man, the man, the spirit doesn't, doesn't rest. He's doing his job every single day. Every single day. So, how we Christians are going to be in face of that reality? That's the question. Jesus himself was tempted by the, by the evil one. Jesus himself was in front of the evil one. And the evil one was in front of Jesus Christ, trying to take Jesus Christ out of his mission. Out of his mission. Lenten season. It's a season to go into the desert where the evil one is found. But the desert is also the place where God gives us his intimacy with us when we encounter the redemption of God. But at the same time, when we encounter the temptation of the evil one. So let me read you 
preparing my homily, I found another thing. A pope from the 6th and 7th century. Between these centuries, he wrote, a, he, he wrote uh, thinking and giving his uh, thought about why, actually he was responding to the, um, the question, how was possible that Jesus Christ, being God, was tempted by God, but the evil one. And here what he says. Temptation is brought to fulfillment by three stages. Three stages. So I want to finish with that, and maybe say something else about another theologian. To give you, a, a, like, a context how temptation and how the Satan, the evil one, works, Satan works in our life. Maybe one day we have to talk about Satan only, huh? And maybe try to go a little bit deeper and, and find out how he works. Maybe I'm gonna do that, but I'm going to continue. Suggestion, that the first stage. Remember, three. That the way Satan works in each one of us. And that the way he wants to tempt each one of us. First, suggestion. Second, delight. And third and last, consent. And we, in, tem we, and we in temptation generally fall through delight and then through consent. So there is a suggestion. We humans fall in delight and then in consent. For being begotten of the sin, of the flesh, we bear within us that through which we suffer conflict. That is called by St. Paul concupiscence. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says that concupiscence is the natural inclination that you and I, human beings, have. The Pope, St. Gregory the Great, says that it is within us a conflict. So the evil one knows that when we are in conflict. We have that concupiscence in there. It's, it's in you, it's in me. We are weak in that, in that sentence. We have that inclination. That inclination makes us weak. But God, incarnate Jesus Christ, came into the world without sin. So the question is how he was tempted if he didn't have any sin. I guess some of you have asked that question. So he's, he continues, the Pope. So he came without sin and so suffers no conflict within himself, which means he has no concupiscence. By the way, that concupiscence is in, relation, in, in direct relation with original sin. The other one who doesn't have it is the Virgin Mary. This is what we believe. And Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary didn't have that. And the rest of us have it. All of us. Concupiscence, weakness. He, Jesus Christ, could therefore be tempted by suggestion. But the delight of sin could never touch his mind. So all these temptations of, of the devil are from without not from within him, within him. So the suggestions come from outside. And we human beings who have that weakness, we start, so it comes from the senses, the, the senses, the senses. In one of his letters of the, 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 the evil one, the, this devil is writing to his nephew, he's talking about that. Because he's correcting his, this no, non-expert devil, it seems that he was trying to tempt somebody in a way. He said, no, you are making a mistake, my son. Ah, by the way, in the movie and in the letters, God is never mentioned. The devil calls God the enemy. 
the enemy. Jesus Christ is never mentioned either. It's his son. That man, his son. Not even the, it, it's very well done, actually. I like it. I mean, I'm not like, I, I like it the way it was, it was done. So the devil is saying, you may have huge mistake. Humans, that way, you don't go that way to tempt humans. You use the senses. Now you got that, we got them. And in the, in the letters, it's very interesting because the, the old devil says, you are going to be punished because you are making a bad mistake. I mean, very huge mistake. I continue. So the senses is the key. Every temptation begins with the senses from outside. And what we do, human beings, with the inclination, in our mind, we start with the, we continue with the delight. The mind. Ah, what the, that the evil one. Ooh, ah, so nice, so beautiful. Ooh, ah, big, big delight. And the last one, consent, that is sin. So the Pope is saying the suggestion is not a sin. The delight is only for human beings. Jesus Christ didn't have any delight because he didn't have any weakness. He didn't have any concupiscence. And because he didn't have any delight, he didn't consent. And the consent has to be the, his, the will. I think it has to be very clear for us humans, Christians, how does it work? Today I wanted to explain to you that. Suggestion, delight, consent. I didn't say it, it was the Pope. I'm just telling you. So let us, in this Lenten season, try to recognize how the evil one or where the evil one is tempting us and how we have to work very hard to overcome those temptations and how that begins and stop the sequence of the state. You know what I mean? So say, Suggestion, delight, consent. So let us pray today for that. And let us ask God the grace to grow in our spiritual life during this Lenten season. Please stand.